for our little mini series about how to ask for support when you need it and why that's harder to do with ADHD. Um, this time we're talking about, I worry about bothering people. And mm -hmm. I have a suspicion that this is actually one of the biggest ones for most people yep. <laughs> in the asking for help um, on sort of a day-to-day -day basis. And so, yeah, let's dig into it. Yep. So item one, RSD. It's rejection it's sensitivity. Thing. Yes. And yeah, so that worrying about being rejected or intruding, they're all sort of mixed together in this big bubble. Yep. And so, and, and they can make it hurt a little bit more when people say no, but even just like the fear of people saying no or of being in the way, like can spiral huge. So this is, this is gigantic. It is it's a big, it's a big part of why asking for help is so hard, but like, especially for folks with ADHD. Yes, absolutely. It is. And I mean, part of the problem there is that we have been told that we are too much or need too much support or are whatever these intense things a lot, like too loud. Right. So like, you know, if you've been told your whole life, you're too loud. The second you ask somebody else to turn up the volume, it's like, <laughs> like that's the reaction where you might be concerned about getting and that sucks yeah yeah uh what about the fear of overwhelming others or mm. like other people having poor boundaries that kind of thing the thing about that is it does suck because we know how poor our boundaries are sometimes so we can extrapolate and you know we, we've talked about how we're encouraged to uh, give help, not accept help. So that whole paradigm, but you can never have effective boundaries on behalf of someone else. Not ever. It's not possible. If there's someone that you feel will never have good boundaries with you and asking that person will always harm them. Yeah, maybe you have to not ever ask that person. But um, until proven otherwise, you need to rely on that other person's ability to say no, and you just communicate as clearly as you can that you are genuinely asking and the answer no is perfectly logically acceptable, even though it probably hurts like anything, uh, but you do understand it. It's, it. It is an acceptable answer for you and you will deal with your own feelings around it. Um, and then, you know, after that, it's that other person's decision, presumably an adult who has their own boundaries and their own journey, and you need to trust that they will handle that themselves because there's no other option. There really yeah. isn't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like saying, hey, this is specifically what I need. It's okay if you can't. Um, and, and it does happen sometimes where people are like, yeah, but I don't feel like I can ever ask that person because they always say yes. Um, but it sure. is, it is one of those things that like, and when people are worried about saying no to other people, like, remember those people that you had a hard time asking because you knew they'd say yes, no matter what. Yes. Um, I've heard it over and again, over and like, over again. When you say no, people respect your word more. I think a really good analogy is, uh, how at least Colleen and I feel about, uh, do not disturb on one's phone um, that I can message whenever I want to because I am assuming that you have good boundaries and have set up a schedule on your phone that says I won't be disturbed at these different times. Yep. And if that's not true, I expect that you've had a conversation with me about it. Yes. Um, yep. th there has been one exception. Uh, fortunately, my sister works a much saner job now that does not have her have her have to have her phone on at all hours of the night. Um, but there, I mean, it has happened before and like we had a conversation about it, right? Um, and I like walked her through some do not disturb options for group messages and things like that. Beautiful. Yeah. And so exactly. Love that. that that is a good example is like, I can send a message whenever because I assume that you have put through these good do not disturb boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yep. And for somebody you might be asking for help from regularly who you're concerned about this, like maybe... I don't know, somebody in your job or academic, uh, you know, setting, um, having a conversation with them about that in advance and saying, look, I need to know if you're, if metaphorically speaking, you do not have good, dis do not disturb settings on, when are your office hours? 
even yeah, right. metaphorically, where I can engage with you that I know it won't be the case. Otherwise, my brain will shut me down and I will never ask. Yeah. And sometimes it is easier to look for other people or just like, yes, you, you have to go through the like, I'm just assuming you've turned on do not disturb. Yes. Um, and if you haven't, I'll recommend, you know, a coach or therapist to you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah. Then after the person, if they're choosing to do it, we're, we're assuming that they're adults. Um, yep. What about if somebody you have to ask like repeatedly for support from? Mm -hmm. You mean like somebody whose job it explicitly is to support you? Like like, you know, uh, an assistant or, uh, you know, therapist, that kind of thing. Oh, it could be, could be. Um, yeah. So sometimes we have like a lot of anxiety about like people pleasing and stuff, including, yeah, people were actually paying to support us. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, so tell me, tell me a little bit about that. It might require therapy again, like a lot of these things do, if it's extreme enough, but if it's just moderately, even just bringing it to the forefront of our mind can help. But again, having that, that conversation ahead of time and going, okay, what can you do? Because even with myself, like I have uh, a policy of texting with my clients within certain boundaries and try to state them. But sometimes the, the, the clients will be like, oh, but I don't know specifically what kinds of things I can ask you for. So asking for a list and I can provide that. So asking the other person for that list and uh and and in in the specific categories of ways that can help or timing or frequency or duration whatever that may be um and and having that so you you have at least information to operate from yeah basically um, starting a conversation like hey yeah. i need to know like what is it you can do what do you want me to stay away from yep like hey if i hit this kind of problem is it okay if i ask for help with it yeah, um, my, my spouse just said, Hey, you know, the next time you're having something delivered, why don't I just go pick it up at FedEx rather than wait around for it? That would be my preference. And hey, I was like, you know you what? Go. Yeah, let's do that. Um, if that's your preference, then it would not, it was not mine. So that's why I, it didn't even occur to me, but he was like, I don't mind doing it, but I'd rather just drive out there and mm -hmm. like not wait around. So yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah. that was, that was a good real life yesterday story. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, <clears throat> another metaphor, metaphoric story that I heard was somebody had to have a, a whole house cleaned. It was very messy and dirty. And, uh, it was like, okay, I can afford three hours of these people's time. And if, if they clean the bedroom or the kitchen, then that's great. But what I really need is the bathrooms. So if you can only afford three hours, metaphorically, you really need the bathrooms done, tell them. They might take three hours to the bathrooms only. That would maybe be less than optimal, but at least they know, at least you have gotten what your priorities are by communicating ahead of time. Yeah. And yep. then for, for the people who like are actually, you know, regular people who are supposed to help you and, and that's a regular like job, um, sometimes having like semi-automated ways to ask for help can reduce some of that load because yeah, we should be able to ask them, should be able to ask them, but you know what? It's still really hard. It turns out. And so what are some like little ways we can skip some of that cognitive load? I mean, I found like I was teaching some kids and I, all I had to do was send an email when I needed a sub. That was it. And then I'd find myself procrastinating it until it was so late. I was like, man, if I could just skip this trip and go to it to avoid sending this email that I'm embarrassed I'm sending so late, I would do that, right? Um, and, and it turned out that like really each letter I typed in those emails was painful. And so if I could reduce it, so one of the things I did, I'm a big shortcuts user, was I made a shortcut that said like it just prompted me for the date and like what I was doing and ask for the sub, like all the asking ones were like already in there because I was asking for the same thing every time. And so all I had to do was put in the date. All of a sudden I was asking him for like, as soon as I knew. Mm -hmm. And and so finding those little ways that we can cut out some of the friction and some of that like time to sit there and like berate ourselves for no good reason. Like if there's anything recurring like that, that is a really, really great thing. Like anything we can do to make it easier to ask sooner because it only gets harder the longer we wait. Yeah. Yep. Love um, it. So yeah, even you can even get it to automations. The last most important 
like countermeasure, I feel like is gratitude is important for, for our like happiness as is helping other people. And so if you don't ask for help, you're robbing yourself of the opportunity to express and feel gratitude. And you are robbing that somebody else of the opportunity to feel helpful. Yeah. And so like there are a lot of people who want to help us in our lives. And sometimes we just have to come up with like, what's the right way for that person to help us, yes. which is specific, by the way, yeah. if you're seeing a coach, a great coaching topic. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. That is our, how to ask for support when you need it and why it's harder with ADHD. Part three, I worry about bothering people. See you next time. Bye.